By now we've already learned that the sun's energy, solar energy, is what drives the weather on our planet. Actually, it's the uneven heating of the earth uh, caused by the earth's shape that causes the weather. As we know, the sun's energy travels through the earth, to the earth through space as radiation. And radiation is a transfer of energy through space by electromagnetic waves. And this radiation, when it touches the ground, or the water even, it changes into heat. If you look at these two thermometers, the one over the land is a higher temperature than the one over the water. That's because during the daytime, the land absorbs heat a lot quicker, the surface gets hotter, and so you've got a higher temperature. The water is going to feel cooler because it doesn't change temperatures near as quickly as the land does. This is what gives us what we call a sea breeze at the beach. Since the air over the land is hotter, that air rises. And, since the, and as we know, hot, warm air has lower pressure. Uh, it's less dense. Warm air rises. And then that leaves a space over the, an area of low pressure over the land. So the cool air over the water, which is high pressure, pushes into that area and takes over. Then that cool air that came in from the land, um, from the water, it begins to warm up and continues rising. So we get this cycle, and this is what we call a sea breeze. Warm air rises. Cool air comes in and takes its place. It gets warmed up by conduction because it's touching the warm ground. Then it begins to rise, goes up. We have a circulation. This is convection. Continues rising goes out, begins to cool off, sinks back down towards the water, and so we have, this is what causes the wind. As the air gets higher and higher away from the ground, it's going to begin to cool off. As the air cools off, it becomes more dense, which causes it to sink. As this slide shows us, we have warm air rising, going back out towards the ocean, it cools off, it sinks, it can, we have low pro, have warm air, air warming up over the land. Warm air rises. This gives us an area of low pressure. Cool air is high pressure. It moves in to take the place. And so this gives us a sea breeze during the daytime. Just think about it. Every time you go to the beach, it seems like the wind is always blowing. Well, during the daytime, that's a sea breeze. So think about it. When you, in the summertime, you're out walking across the sidewalk or you're walking across the sand and it is so very hot. But at nighttime, you go outside and the grass feels cool, the ground is cooled off, and it does it really quickly. So at night, we will have the reverse. We'll have what they call a land breeze. Again, as we look at our temperature, our thermometers here, we'll see that at night over the land, the temperature is lower and the, now the water's a little bit higher, so we're going to get a reversal. So at night we have cool land and we have warm water. When the sun goes down, the land begins to cool off. But since water changes temperature much slower than land does, the water is still somewhat warmer. At night, since the water is a little bit warmer, the air is going to be a little bit warmer. So that air, there's where our area of low pressure is going to be. The warm air from the water is going to rise. It's going to go in, and since the air over the land is cooler, it's going to be higher pressure. So it's going to go out to sea, and this is going to give us a land breeze because it's coming from the land. So let's do a quick recap. Heat is transferred uh, by way of conduction, radiation, and convection. The sun provides heat energy called radiation. It comes down and heats the land. The air touches the ground, and this touching is called conduction. And then as the air molecules circulate around as they rise and fall, that's convection. Look at these two graphics, and we'll see that uh, we have on the left, we have a what? A sea breeze because it's coming from the sea. And on the right, we have a land breeze because it's coming from the land. Winds are named for where they come from. So one thing we've already learned is that because there is a difference in how water heats up and land heats up, 
that will give us unhe uneven heating of the earth which will affect the weather. But now we're going to talk about how the curvature, the shape of the earth, causes unheating, uneven heating of the earth. Well first of all, let's try to understand the angle of the sunlight. It's very, very important. The greater the angle, which means up to 90 degrees, the closer 90 degrees we get, 90 degrees is going to be coming directly down to the earth. So the larger the angle, the more direct the sunlight, the hotter it's going to be. A lower, a smaller number angle, less, less direct is going to be less heat. Less direct, less heat. Again, a 90 degree or direct angle is going to give us very intense heat. The part of the earth that's going to get this is the equator. Now this is where the shape of the earth comes in. Because the earth is curved, even though the sun is out here, right and shining directly at the earth the equator is going to get 90 degree uh, the farther north you go the less direct until finally even at the the north pole you're going to get very very low angles of light so the farther north you get the less energy we're going to get okay the farther north the less energy we get therefore it's going to be cooler Equator is the hottest and coldest at the poles. So wind is moving air. And air always moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Wind moves from high pressure to low pressure. Cold temperature, the molecules are closer together, they're packed tightly together, they're more dense, more pressure. Low pressure, warmer temperatures, Molecules are farther apart, they are less dense, less pressure. So high pressure, cold and dry, densely packed. Low pressure, warm air, less dense, spread out. So based on what we just said, winds are always going to blow from cold areas to warm areas. Because cold air is high pressure, and high pressure always pushes low pressure out of the way. So at the North Pole, we're going to have higher pressure. At the equator, we're going to have lower pressure. Now, if that's the only thing that was involved, going from high pressure to low pressure, then the wind would always blow from the north down to the equator, and that would be the only winds we'd have. But because the Earth's rotation, uh, we get something called the Coriolis effect. And this rotation pulls the air along as the Earth turns, and so depending on whether the air is colder or warmer, that's going to affect the direction of the wind. But the Earth's rotation also greatly affects the, the winds. Now in addition to uh, surface winds, which is what we feel, up in the stratosphere, up in the higher levels of the atmosphere, we have what they call a jet stream. A jet stream is an upper level wind, and they tend to blow always from the west to the east. And they tend, especially in the United States, they can really affect our weather because they can move tropical, they can move storms, stormy weather across the United States. Now we have, we call these global winds or prevailing winds. Now because at the equator, because of the Earth's rotation, the air at the equator is rising, so the Earth seems to be rotating under it, almost like when you're driving down the road and you stick your arm out the window and it feels like the wind's blowing against you it's really because you're moving forward well that's the same deal with the trade winds it's because the earth the air is rising and the earth is spinning under it trade winds always come from the east and like we already mentioned winds are named for the direction that they're coming from the westerlies as we see in these two yellow bands the westerlies because they're denser a little bit colder air they tend to hug the earth and they're pulled along with the earth. So the westerlies obviously seem like they're coming out of the west and again caused by the, the ro rotation of the earth. As we've already discussed, water heats up and cools off at a much slower temperature than land does. And the earth is covered 75% in water. 75% of the earth is covered in water. And this ocean water moves around and, and greatly influences the temperature of the land that's nearby. 
we're going to look at let's look at the next slide. The ocean can keep an area either cooler or warmer depending on what kind of water it's carrying, depending on the temperature. So we're going to see on the next slide there, there can be a warm water current or there can be a cold water current. As we can see, we have out here in the ocean coming up from the equator a huge warm water current. This warm water current is called a Gulf Stream and about halfway across the ocean the name changes to the North Atlantic Drift. Now this North Atlantic Drift since it's carrying all this warm water, it has a tremendous effect on the climate up of, of Europe. Without the Gulf Stream, all of this area up in here, England, would be frozen in. Uh, it would not have near as nice a climate as it does. It really keeps it warm up there. And over here, we can see coming down from Greenland, we're going to have a cold current. And this cold current, where it bumps into this warm current, causes there to be some really terrible storms in New England here off the coast of New England. So we have cold currents and warm currents and so these warm ocean currents and cold ocean currents, the rotation of the earth, the shape of the earth, the difference in how land heats up quickly and cools off quickly and water heats up slowly and cools off slowly. You put all these together and they cause the weather.